Ahoy there, Pirate Brethren. Hope you're all having a great day today. Um, I'm going to talk about medium ships today. I want to talk about the medium ships that I have, how I use them, and ultimately let you know which one is my favourite. I haven't done a topic like this for a while on Skull and Bones, and I figure it's well overdue. Now, before um, you go any further, I just want to kind of prefix this with the statement that I am not an elite player um, on any game I play. I'm a lifelong gamer, but I'm never quite elite at absolutely anything. Um, I find a method within a game that works for me, what gives me, one, a balance of success, and two, hopefully, maximum enjoyment. Just because I choose to play the game one way does not mean it is the right way or the wrong way. And I'm in no way saying that what you're doing is wrong if it's working for you. And that being said, um, Feel free, though, to tell me how you use your ships and what you use them for and which one is your favourite. But yes, let's start off with the Pada Wakang. This is the first medium ship that I got. I got it during the open beta, like I think a lot of people did. Um, it is a DPS ship, and it has the Detonate perk. Detonate perk increases damage to structures by 50%. Increases weapon damage radius by 12%, and explosive hits have a 70% chance of triggering an explosion, dealing 1,000 damage to all enemies within 125 meters. The chance increases to 100% if the target is ablaze. Um, this is really cool. I have to admit, right off the bat, this is a ship that I use very often, and one of the reasons I use it often is because. One of my favorite weapons in the game is the Bombarder cannons, uh, specifically the exotic Dardell uh, Bombarder cannons that fire a full volley with a single shot. I have used them on almost every ship just to find out which ones they work best on. But the Padawakang is the ultimate siege ship. If I am going to be doing a fort, or if I'm going to be doing a um, hostile takeover, generally, if I'm going to have towers involved, I will be using the Padawakang. It is an absolute beast. Um, the Dardells, obviously, are an explosive bombarder, so they have radius, and they deliver explosive damage. So they do feed into the natural uh, benefits of the Padawakang's detonate perk. Um, I have run this build with... Other weapons as well. I have tried it with the weapons that do explosive damage, like torpedoes. I've also tried it with a sea fire on the front so that I can trigger the ablaze before uh, using the Dardells. But typically, I have four Dardells on all points and usually a mortar in the middle that uh, will do explosive damage. And yeah, this is my siege platform. Obviously, it doesn't take the punishment that the snow takes. But it's still a very, very versatile ship. It's reasonably fast. It has a reasonable cargo hold. And it's reasonably well protected. But it's an absolute beast when equipped with the right weapons. Okay. Next, we'll talk about the Snow. Now, the Snow was actually the second medium ship that I built. Um, I built it because at the time I was still doing a lot of the uh, main campaign. And I was playing a lot of the time on my own, and the Snow is a tank-based ship, meaning it's designed to take a lot of punishment. So it's very much solo-friendly. It gives you good survivability. So it has the Tenacity perk. This increases bracing strength by 50%, increases brace strength recovery by 150%, recovers brace strength by 4% per second whilst bracing with a thousand percent with a thousand brace strength so it's all about absorbing damage now the tenacity perk isn't about dealing damage so it essentially leaves it up to you on how you equip the snow and i have tried every weapon on this ship to try and find a good one so i like to have bombarder cannons on the aft and on the bow um, and i like to have regular cannons on the um, the port and starboard slots um I've tried different things. If I'm going up close and personal, I'll have some demi cannons on there. Zams are my favorite just because I like the uh, ablaze um, effect that it does. But you're not limited to it. It really doesn't matter. You can deal damage however you choose because you're not getting any extra benefit. But the perk essentially 
means that you have good survivability if you use the bracing effectively. Um, now, there is a piece of furniture that will further increase this. It actually is uh, very, very good to use when you use the snow in a team. Basically, I, I forget which piece of furniture it is, and I apologize. But essentially, when you are completely stationary at anchor, your, uh, your damage resistance goes up and your threat level goes up, allowing you to basically coax the um, enemy ships to focus fire on you. In a team, this works unbelievably well, especially if you have someone who is in a bark and they are able to heal you. And it's easy to heal you because you're not moving. If they've got a healing mortar or bombarder cannons on there, they just top up your health occasionally while you're generating all the threat and also being a tough nut to crack anyway. All right. After that, we have the Brigantine, the third medium ship I unlocked. This was um, the last one you could get rather easily in the main game without having to jump through some hoops or make an expensive purchase. The Brigantine is a DPS medium ship, so again, structured around dealing damage. The Brigantine is also the fastest of all the ships in the game right now. Its perk is the Bullhorn, which increases ramming damage by 45%, applies flood, the uh, flooded um, effect on a successfully rammed ship, and reduces the duration of torn sails by 80% basically from 10 seconds to 2 seconds. So this is a DPS-based ship that is primarily about movement. Now, I again, I've tried a number of different things with this. There's some really great variations of this ship out there on the sea right now. I know that a lot of people like to have long-range options with this ship. They can maneuver, keep, the, keep their targets at range, and uh, basically survive by not being up close and personal. But if I'm in a group or I'm doing an event where I know there's other players, I recently have been focusing on trying to maximize the flooding damage. So one of my tactics is to ram the ship to um, start applying the flooding damage and then hit them with um, demi, uh, flooding demi cannon threes off the port and starboard. I do usually have the dual winch ballistica on the front just so that I can hit ships at range. Although I have been switching this up for the... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so terrible with item names. With the um, blue Ballistica ones, the ones that you can use to tear sails, I've been mixing it up between those ones. Um, on the back, you can have pretty much whatever you want. Usually, um, because I'm using this ship for high maneuverability, I usually have tearing Culverin cannons on the back so that I can tear the sails of anyone that is pursuing me. But again, I've mixed it up. Um, and then on the uh, auxiliary slot, I usually have a mortar. Right now, I have the um, Leopold, which also deals flooding damage. So, yeah, that's what I'm currently running. And it's working quite well, um, but it, it's not very solo friendly. It's pretty good in a group. Okay, moving on, we have the Sambuk. So, this ship was um, initially expensive because you had to buy the blueprint with uh, pieces of eight. So, starting out at the beginning of the season when no one was generating a lot of pieces of eight and everyone was investing back in their empires, this was a big purchase. Um, not so big now, obviously, that everyone's got their empires established. But, yeah, I really, really like the Sandbook. It's a DPS ship as well. It is, I would think, more fragile than the other medium ships. Maybe not as fragile as the Brigantine, but it feels fragile. But it has the Scorched perk. That's 50% damage to ships with the ablaze effect. Deals 5,000 burning damage when you apply the ablaze effect to an enemy ship. And when you apply bl ablaze, it will ablaze all enemies within 150 meters. So yeah, this ship is all about fire. So I usually have a sea fire turret on the front, like the blue spectre, which I recently acquired. I usually have uh, Zam 3s on the uh, port and starboard. And then I actually normally have fire bombarder threes on the stern and then on the auxiliary i have rockets everything is about fire it's about keeping the uh, ablaze effect going and dealing maximum damage i also have the furniture that basically reduces reload time for every consecutive hit so i can get up close with the zams and start hitting them consecutively and lowering my reload time to just keep that damage rolling this is a fantastic brawling ship um, I've used this for PvP as well as in group settings when we've been doing um, usually like merchant con, uh, sorry, 
um, merchant convoys and elite warships and stuff like that. And it just works brilliantly. If you can get in there early with the damage on, on PvP, you can absolutely wreak havoc. Um, but if they catch you out of position, um, it's quite fragile. So it has its it has a trade-off. Um, either way, I do really like the sandbox. It took me a while to get into it. Okay, last but not least, we have the Bark. This obviously is the support class medium ship that came as part of Season 1. Um, this has the revitalized perk, which restores 0.5% of severe damage and whole health per second, as well as for nearby friendly ships. Just to be clear, friendly ships include anybody who you're not currently fighting with that's a player. So you don't actually have to be in a in a party with them or a team with them. If they're nearby and they're in the same event as you, they will have the benefit of getting that 0.5% of severe damage and, and whole health healed per second. Um, the, other perk, the other part of the perk is it restores 15% of stamina, 10% severe damage, and 60% more hull health on a friendly ship while using a repair weapon. So now it has a perk that boosts the repair weapons. So this is the ship that I have arguably used the least. I know that a lot of people run this ship. Um, it's always nice to have somebody in a group activity who is running one because it just like the effect it has on the whole group survivability is really noticeable straight away especially in events like the plague king obviously um i myself have tried a couple of things i like to have offensive weapons on the uh, port and starboard points and then have the repair bombarders on the aft and stern and then obviously a repair mortar um, as the auxiliary this basically allows me to point my ship at the ship that I want to heal while keeping my side pressed against the enemy where I can deal damage. This is not a perfect build. Um, like I said, I've spent the least amount of time with the back and it's a ship I'm hoping to use more. Anyway, guys, that is all of the medium ships. That is how I'm currently using them and how I've used them previously. Honestly, it's a, it's really difficult to pick which one's my favorite. I think overall, I probably have spent the most of the time in the snow, but that was because for a while it seemed really hard to find people to play with. But since update 1.5 last week has made the call for help so much better, I have been spending more time in the Sambok and the Padawakang, whether I'm depending on what I'm doing. If it's like I said, if it's forts, it's the Padawakang. If it's merchant convoys, it's the Sambok. And I think actually I'm going to give it to the sandbook it's just so much fun getting in there setting the ships on fire and just hammering away so right now as of season one the sandbook has my pick let me know what you guys think what's your favorite ship how you how you use the medium ships and um, yes i am planning on making a video on smaller ships i know smaller ships are not a viable option right now in the end game but as we know we are getting ship upgrades at some point this year, and that apparently is going to make all ships viable for the end game loop. I can't wait to see what that is because some of those small ships look really, really cool. Um, okay, so that's my thoughts. Please leave me yours in the comments below. If you like quick and consistent Skull and Bones content, please give me a like and a subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.